welcome you to tonight's celebration of worship and praise. Now, I know a lot of people in this situation, in this environment, think there's not a lot to celebrate. But here at Darrington, we know that there is a lot to celebrate. The kingdom of God is advancing. The gospel is being preached. Men's lives are being changed. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And I just want you brothers to know that your labor here in these fields is what is drawing men from around the country to the dairy community. All right. Amen. Amen. We've been able to see some of the movements of God through the seminary, through the faith-based form, volunteers that come in on a weekly basis, ministering to us, particularly with Chaplain Knapp. We know that she has a heart for us. She has, she encourages, she enlightens, she teaches, she will correct. If you, if you, if you get too far out of pocket, she will correct. But nevertheless, we are thankful for Chaplain now. We're thankful for the administration today, Senior Warden Jones, Sister Warden Tucker. We're thankful for them, our newest warden, Warden Dinner. We're thankful for what they've, what they've been doing because, you know, whenever God gets ready to move in a situation, he has to put the proper people in place. And we know that as people of God, we're not really doing anything new. What we're doing is we're joining in what God is already doing. And so even before they arrived at the seminary, God was already doing something right here on the damage of the world. So I've been here since 2011, and I've been a part of that by the grace of God. And so tonight is a night of celebration. Where is the class of 2015? Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow begins our last year, the fourth leg of this trip that we've had here on the Darrington Unit. And I know all of us have enjoyed the Darrington experience. <laughs> Amen. But tonight, as I said, tonight is a night of celebration. I'm thankful for Rock of Salvation, coming in, my dad, my sisters, my brothers. Thankful for them contributing their time to come out to minister to us through word and through song. Amen. Before I bring up my first guest, I just want you to know that now I was reading Psalm 145 one last night. And it said that uh, King David said, I will extol the Lord, my King. And I was, I was somewhat dumbfounded by that word, extol. It's not a word that you hear very often. You know, we hear praise, and we hear hallelujah. You know, hallelujah is the highest praise. Yeah. But I want to look up this word, extol, to see exactly what it meant. And it said, it said that the definition of extol is praise at the highest level. Yeah. So tonight is a night to extol. Amen. Amen.
It stirs the soul quite unlike anything that we're used to. Maybe we hear a good speech, we hear some good preaching, but music seems to do something to our soul and it stirs us and encourages us and it lifts us up. On those days when we think we can't make it anymore, sometimes a song can just keep us going for 24 more hours and sometimes it's all we need. Because even within music, the instrument, the saxophone, stirs the soul even more than any individual instrument in my opinion. When you hear a good saxophone, just play the saxophone, and it's like the sax is speaking to you. God, it's not just music coming out of the horn, it's just words coming out. Tonight we're blessed with the saxophone, quite like none other, who just happens to be my own brother.
finds a good thing. And obtains favor from the Lord. Amen. Be in this situation, you know the value of a wife. We all know the value of a wife. Amen. Now, our next guest has stood beside my father in life and ministry for 27 years. 27 years. But not only has she stood beside him in ministry through the church, she is also a champion of education. And those of you who know me know how I am about education. Amen. She is the executive dean at Houston Community College. And we are, we can be one of the first to congratulate her as she just recently received her PhD in education from Texas Southern University. Tonight we have just such a speaker who's going to address us. Please welcome Dr. Betty Fortune. Tomorrow. 
Let me say it again. Today is no indication of what you will be tomorrow. Today is just today. And on tomorrow, it will become your past. It does not dictate your future. I need to say a word in here. Your past needs to be in the past. God is in your future.
tonight. Come on, tell me, say, I feel all right. I, come on, I don't care what the enemy said, I still feel all right. There's something about praise that will change your perspective about your situation. Somebody needs to make up in your mind tonight. I say this, I'm not going to let my circumstance stop my celebration. But I, like David, I will find a way to give God praise. Because for no other reason, because he died for us. So that he takes our sins and he puts them in the sea of forgetfulness. That we don't have to no longer allow the enemy to keep us hostage over our past. That we don't have to feel guilty over our past because we serve a God who, who loved us so much. And his sin has only begotten son, Jesus, to die for our sins. And that's why I can never get too tired to praise God because he gave me his best, so I'm going to give him my best. Crank it all the way up.
song after the message, but we praise God for you. We ain't going nowhere. Amen. Amen. You know, how does, how does a son introduce his father? You know, I pondered that for the past few weeks. How does a son introduce his father? But there are many things that I can say about my dad, things that he's been able to accomplish by the grace of God, the recognition that he's received from the people of the community, the people at the Rock. I can talk about those things, but somehow those things just didn't strike a, a, a personal chord with me. Because you see, he's my dad. So I didn't want to talk about the technical stuff. I wanted to talk about the relational things. You know, in, in the Old Testament, the Hebrews understood God's righteousness in the context of his faithfulness to his word. They always knew that no matter what, even if they violated the covenant, that God would be faithful because he would not go back on his word. Now it is a father's job to exemplify, to be a visible image of God in the lives of his children. And I can tell you that tonight, for the past 13 years, in the darkest seasons of my life, season of my life, my father has been faithful to me. I've been shipped all around the state been in various holes, but he has always been with me, whether it was through letter, through phone call, or through a visit. And so to me, my dad is a faithful one. He is faithful, just as God is faithful. And I thank him for what he has done in my life, and how he has been there for me through this dark period of my life. So that's how this son would introduce his father. He is the pastor and founder of Rock of Salvation Church. The people there love him just as I do. Because he is faithful to them just as he is faithful to me. And so if you would stand and receive in the Lord, I speak for the hour. Pastor. Y'all hear me because y'all heard 
James Fortune was coming. And he said this won't be his last time. Yeah. I guess it depends on how I preach whether or not it be my last time. <laughs> you have to be invited. I'm thankful. I've got to thank God for my wife, Betty Fortune. She was an When she came into my life, James was about nine and Sherry was about seven. Raising them by myself. And God sent me a virtuous woman. Amen. She's got a person who may not birth you to be a mother. And she has certainly been a mother to all of my children. Thank God for her. And I want to thank God, you know, Vandre, you know, we, we come in so many different ways, circumstances, and Vandre uh, was about to be adopted. And his great aunt said, no, I want him to know his people. She took him in and was raised as a brother with her children. Melanie, stand up, Melanie. And she read Those are what you call sister cousins. <laughs> Amen. And we have one family. I thank God for, for James. You know, this is the first time I think that all three of my sons have been with me at one time. Yes. Be there for you because it's rough out there. I, I'm looking for the day 
that, you know, I'm a pastor. I'm looking for the name of this powerful man can come and be with me in ministry. And God has a way of working miracle. Like Betty says, you know, your past is your past, your now is now, but look to your future. And I'm looking forward to that day when he'll stand with me. I'm going to hang around here as long as I can. But God, but I'm certainly proud of him because without him, we would have James here and I wouldn't be here. Thank you, the Rock of Salvation Church. Now, now, uh, like Andre say, I'm from old school, because I'm old. <laughs> you know, someone told me one time, they said, nothing gets old but clothes. I found out they were lying. <laughs> and some said, well, age is just a number. They lying too. <laughs> and you gonna get old. The only way you don't get old, you die young. <laughs> to live to get old, you know. And, and I told him, I'm, I'm less than five years from the promise. That ain't young. I'm 65, going on 66. And I thank God for every year that he's given me. Because I have a testament, I can tell you, I ain't supposed to be either, but thank God for his grace and his mercy. Now, I'm going to preach. Uh, uh, they said that, oh, I must, I must recognize uh, 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 that was all I got to read right now. Gary Lane. Gary. Gary. Gary he runs a halfway house, and, and I have a passion for men who have been in trouble, who are in trouble. And I started going out there with him once a month. And when I go out there, I, I carry. Yes, we have raffles. They look for me to come just to get the raffle. I don't got to teach anyway. But, but I enjoy going with them. They look for me every one third out of the month. And I think that's something we all ought to remember. Plant seed where you are. Right. I just love going to Gary Lane's place. And if you ever want to be in a good house, find Gary Lane. He's serving a man of God who's concerned about his people. Thank you, Chapter Nat, uh, for allowing this to happen. And she gave me the rules. And when she gave me the rules, I didn't have no problem with it. We got to learn how to find rules. We might not like it. But there are rules, and when you break rules, there are consequences. And so I'm glad that to be here today and share with you in this period of praise, worship, and preaching. Now, before I preach, we're going to go back to old school again. I'm going to ask Will to come and do a verse, two verses of Amazing Grace. Y'all remember Amazing Grace? If any of y'all came up near the church, you heard Amazing Grace. You might not have gone in, but you heard Amazing grace. Come on, bless us, Will. Then we're going to have some preaching. And you know what? I, I preach at, 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 uh, at, uh, what did I preach at, at, uh, Carol Bench a couple of times. But I'm going to tell you what. Uh, they say this is what they call a maximum security. I see some maximum praise. <laughs> God bless you. Come on, we have a
and they that dwell therein. He is founded upon the seas and established upon the floods. How could Columbus discover America when it was already here? When he got here, that was some folk here. And instead of them saying he discovered America, God would say, the Indian discovered Columbus. <laughs> Can I get a witness? No, you cannot create something that's already been created. You see, Jesus was one that stepped out into nothing. And he made something. He placed the stars in their silver socket, never to bring in for a light bulb change. He placed the moon in this place, placed the sun in this place. He's able to arrange, roll out a green carpet of grass and change it from a rusty brown to a beautiful green. He divided the earth from the waters and then one day he decided to make a man. And the Bible says he made man in his own image and breathed in the man the breath of life. He became a living soul. We were not here without God. But Reverend, how do you know? It's by faith. By faith. Are we saved through Jesus Christ? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. You see, the earth belongs to God. The fullness belongs to God. He founded it so he has a right to be called the king. Yes. See, at the Rock of Salvation, I started this church, but look, I can give no baby yet. They have what they call selective obedience. Then in other words, they, they, they obey things that they want to do. But if they don't want to do it, well, you baby, well, I, I, I was busy today, and we got to put up with it. But with God, if he's never busy, you ought not be too busy. If you really believe he's the king of kings and the law of law. Jesus did create the world. Everything. He knew the earth was already his when he created it. That's why he said, it's mine. But what happened was, Satan has infiltrated the earth and tried to destroy men throughout the world. Satan is trying to come between us and God. And so many times, he's doing a good job at it. That's why in his, when he taught his disciples, he taught them to pray that thy kingdom will come, thy will may be done in earth as it is in heaven. If the kingdom comes, it must come from pastors and teachers who stand boldly and preach the word of God. Acts 20 and 28 says, the pastor said, the pastor said, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock which the Holy Ghost has made you overseer and to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. As a pastor, as a minister of the gospel, we have a responsibility to be sure we feed the flock. Yeah. Tell them about the kingdom of God. He said, Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, I love you. If you love me, feed my sheep. Yeah. Yeah. Don't feed them what they want to hear, but feed them the, um, the gospel of Jesus. Right. Are you with me? I'm going to get with y'all in a minute. He said, after my departure, shall grievous wolves come in and destroy the flock. After my departure, Paul said, after I'm gone, grievous wolves will come in. We must be careful. You see, let me tell you something. The pastor, the preacher, your guide, your counselors can't be with you all the time. But Satan is a spirit. He creeps in when you're all by yourself. There's one thing he works on, and that is the wounded and the separated. Once you've been wounded, before we came down here, we were watching the, the National Geo Channel. And, and those lines, what are some tough cats in lines? They wait until one of the animals is away from the herd. Creeps in and destroys them. And then those who've been wounded, when you feel like someone has done you wrong, he works on you and makes you feel like you're not getting the best shot in life. Are you with me? Jesus asked, he said, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? He said, Lord, some say you're Jeremiah, some of the other prophets. He said, well, then, Peter, who do you say I am? He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Yes. You cannot follow the kingdom unless you know who Jesus is. Right. The kingdom of God will not be embraced by people who don't know who Jesus is. Yes. Matter of fact, 
You can build a building. You can build a congregation. But if they don't embrace Jesus or know Jesus, they're just a congregation of people. I tell people all the time, if you're looking for a church home, be sure you have confidence in that pastor who watches for your soul. Yes, the fabric of the church is changing. In the 60s when I was young, you know, they came up with what they call the new morality. It simply means that the things that were bad then, before that, it's all right to do them now. But you see, Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. We may change, but the word of God does not change. Congregations are voting on what's wrong and what's right to follow. But Paul said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. We must not let the world tell us how to be the church. We must not change the round of work. Every year they come out with something new you can do. It's all right to do this now. It's all right to do this now. But you know what? The same Bible that my grandma used, I'm still reading it now. Jesus does not change them. Yes, it does. It does, no, it doesn't. Now, your kingdom, the validity of whether you accept the kingdom will be determined by your ability to not conform. Church in here is different from church out here. Church in here, your options are limited. I heard Chris Rock say one time, a man is as faithful as his options. I'm glad you all listen. The more options you have, you follow me? The less your faith can be. But when your options are great, you find yourself moving in a direction that takes you away from God. Some things you cannot do it that way. But you got to face the world when you got here. Here you can clap your hands, raise your hands, shout for joy, but when you get outside these walls, you got the world to deal with. The world is not always fair. The test of God text says that to embrace a kingdom culture, for ministry, the word embrace means to wrap around with one's arms. It means to be as close as you can to being what God's kingdom is like. It means that however the kingdom of God operates, that's what our ministries should look like. If we are to embrace it, we must know what we are embracing. Don't grab every wind and doctrine that comes along. But hold fast to the word of God which has been given. Culture is the integrated pattern of human knowledge, belief, and behavior that depends on man's capacity for learning and transmitting knowledge to succeeding generations. It simply means that what you learn, pass it on. You learn through the word, also through experience. Can y'all remember when Parents would say, don't you do that, it'll get you in trouble. It's because they've been where we as children were on our way. You cannot read enough books to get wisdom. It comes with age and experience. You know, I, I, I didn't learn, I've learned more since I've been pastoring than I did when I before pastoring because I looked at the book but it wasn't like folk in the world. Matter of fact, they'll throw you a hook, crook, and a loop, trying to distract you from what's going on. And the reason Paul writes this is because there were problems in the church. Now, 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 don't you think that the devil doesn't come to church? The Bible says, when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, it says, Satan came also. That means he comes to church. He stands on worship boards. He sings in choir lofts. He sits on deacon staffs. He even goes to seminary school. He preach the best of sermons. Satan is everywhere seeking a movie make it out. And look what he says. He said, he said, Lord, you know, you got uh, Joe so protected. You take some of this stuff away. I guarantee you'll cuss you to your face. 
And you know what? That tells me something. That God allows Satan to sometimes come into our lives. But he can only take what he wants God, what, what God wants him, what God allows him to take. And sometimes his taking can make you strong. It's hard to see it and realize, but let me tell you something. This experience is here. Certainly, you don't want to be here. I wouldn't want to be here, but make the best of it and live through it.
Are you with me? Yes, Jesus began his first church. You see, I got to teach it before I start screaming. You might not get none of that. This is my second sermon. I'm kind of tired. So say, pray with me, Lord. But when the vision is moved from membership to embracing the kingdom work, you'll discover your crowds will get small. If you don't believe me, you remember when Jesus was healing and doing all the feet, the folk were coming for a free lunch? Miracles that came by the multitude when he started teaching doctrine like you live by dying, get rich by becoming poor, find your life by losing your life, hold on by letting go. The Bible says the crowds walk no more with you. We have the vision of a big church. Yeah, but you gotta, you gotta get the word. No, Lord, you're running folk away from the church. If they leave, let them leave. He said, but are you going to? He said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Help me, Lord Jesus. When the crowds leave, you gotta stand strong. You know, I hear so many you know, people that get, they come in, and preachers, they preach two sermons and won't start a church. Somebody will follow nobody. Yeah, I might say that. A fool can find somebody to follow a fool. Are you with me? It takes wisdom, knowledge, and training. Let me tell you something. It took Jesus three years with his disciples before he sent them out. I think we got too many churches where folks are starting and ain't trained. And that's just as bad as not going to church at all. If God has not prepared you for ministry. I'm thankful to be here for this celebration as you go to school. But when you come out of school, don't be so anxious to start pastoring. Serve. Bible says to serve this present age, I call it to fulfill. And all our power engaged with the masters will serve. The greatest among you will be one who serves, not one who leads. It's, it's not a coincidence that the Get Rich movement has attracted, attracted multitudes. Name and claim has attracted so many. Let me tell you something. You can't just name what you want and get it. Amen. Honey, you go out there and you see the car you want. You just start rubbing it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Come back, you don't get go back and rub it in the name if you keep claiming that. But let me tell you something, if you won't get it, you need to have a job and some credit. <laughs> You're not going to get everything you want in life. You may not get what your friend has, but be thankful for what you got. My, my, my mother said, if we went to my mother's funeral, I think, no, we were talking at my mother's, whatever it was. She said, she said, Daddy, you know, you say y'all were poor, but every time I look at pictures, y'all look like you were rich. I told her, you don't have to be rich to go first class. <laughs> you just be excited about what you have and stand on and say, thank you, Lord. My daddy told me. It's nothing wrong with the prosperity message. Don't get me wrong. We ought to ask them to tell us the whole story. You see, people who embrace the kingdom of God get cause repossessed. People who embrace the kingdom of God get homes for clothes on. People who embrace the kingdom of God get sick. And yes, people who embrace the kingdom of God, they die. We need to know the whole story. That there are some challenges and some troubles in being a Christian. Don't let nobody fool you. You don't have to send nobody $25 to get healed. Don't let Thank you, Lord. And some things I wish I had gotten, I 
I wish I had, but God knows best. He knows what's best for you. We all make decisions that we wish we live to regret. Are you with me? There's no such thing as the good and the bad, but the caught and the uncaught. Some are slicker than others and don't get caught. Oh Lord, help me today. I hope you get All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And my Bible says that all unrighteous is sin. Ain't no stuff in big sin, little sin. Ain't no big, ain't no uh, little white lie. A lie is a lie. But first John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What can wash away our sins? Nothing. Our present is a flow that makes me white as snow. Now, now, embracing of the kingdom must start with the path he has chosen. Jeremiah 3.15 says, and I will give you pastors. According to my own heart, who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding, who shall broaden the vision of the kingdom of God, not without compromising biblical principles. God never preached to get folk to join. Matter of fact, a lot of his preaching ran folk away. He said, whosoever will, let him come. Are you with me? I've been passing these years, but I've never seen someone say, Lord, help me to reach somebody. It's always, Lord, help me to get. If you, have not, if you cannot come to the Rock of Salvation, and you just join church, Never been to Sunday school, don't know the books of the Bible, and tell me God's vision for the rock? You better go somewhere else. <laughs> he gives us leaders to feed us with knowledge and understanding. In Acts, the church became empowered on that Pentecostal experience. Because they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and in prayer. No Timothy got sick with stomach trouble. Isaiah was saw in half in the law. Stephen was stoned to death. Peter was hung upside down. Paul lost his head on Nero, Nero's chopping block. In this world to embrace the kingdom will give you hell. All these prophets and apostles died by embracing the kingdom. It is something, the things that killed Paul, he was telling other folk to grab. My, my, my. Right. Ministry is not the glitter and gold that you look at TV and see. Yeah. It is not the, those who say that everything is going to be right in your life. You will not go, you will have some dry seasons and some good seasons. Right. This may be, you know, this may be a season of prosperity with you right now. I told my cousin when he got out, I said, man, if you had uh, went to prison, you'd be dead. He said, I know I would, Will. But before long, he was dead because he did not embrace. While in prison, he was the hottest star track on time, in time. But afterwards, he forgot what brought him. And it took his freedom for granted. Now, I've given y'all all a lot of bad news out there. Everything I said ought to make you say, well, I don't want to be that. All brand new. But let me tell you something. There is some good news. And I'm going to shut this thing down. Romans said, the spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs of God and must be heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Are you with me? Yeah. Verse 18 says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not too worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. That is some good news. And as I close, I'm so glad that I got the good news a long time ago. When I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come on to me and rip. Lay down thy weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. And I came to Jesus just like I was. I was weary, wounded, and sad. I found in him a resting place. He made me so glad. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I'll freely give. 
this thing. The God's gonna work out whatever your situation is. Let's turn that up a little bit more.
And I just, I, I, I learned something, y'all, that God told me a long time ago. He said, James, I'm not attracted to problems. He said, everybody got problems. Come on, tell him, say, everybody got problems. He said, but I am attracted to praise. He said, if you really want me to show up in your situation, you've got to learn how to praise me in advance like it is already done, like it is already fixed. And so we, so we like to say, we just say, God's going to do it. God's going to do it. See, y'all agree with us about faith right there? I just want us to agree. We're connecting our faith together. Come on, can you just tell somebody, say, God's going to fix it. God's going to fix it. That's what it is, Troy, right there, right there, Troy. All right. Who's agreeing about faith? Watch me hit this. Say, God's going to do it. God's going to do it. It's right there, Troy. You got to watch me. I got you. All right. Come on, just one more time. Come on, just tell somebody else. Just say, say, God's going to fix it. God's going to fix it. Oh, I hear you, brothers. I hear you right there. Come on, you got to say it like you really believe that thing. Uh, come on. You got to say, say, God's going to do it. God's going to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we sing it together, y'all. That's what I want you to remember tonight as you're leaving, as you're walking around. Just say, say, God's going to fix it. God's going to fix it.
know he, he will have you in a situation where you have to trust in him. And he can show you that he will do it. And so I'm thankful tonight for this man to be you. All the brothers that are here, those who say me, those who preach me, those who teach me, those even those who argue with me. I'm thankful my family is on the stage as well. for today, and I shall be with you. Amen. My beautiful sisters, who have been with me as well. Pastor Marshall, my first opportunity to be here. It's, it's a wonderful thing when you, you have someone whom you are good friends with. This was a beautiful thing. Now, he didn't know that this was going to happen. He had no idea his father was going to show up. And I'm just thankful tonight to be a part of that blessing. A lot of memories were made tonight. Thank you to be able to meet my brother's beautiful wife. See my sister again. The other members of five.